There's a huge pool of patients who have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, but there is a lot of different fish swimming in that particular pool. And so we're talking today about a JAK paper, and it's the effect of IF channel inhibition on hemodynamics and exercise tolerance in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, a randomized trial, and a successful trial in a very difficult group of people. So I'm with uh, Dr. Thomas Marwick, and we're looking at a topic that is really a group that's really difficult to treat. Can you, first off, tell me why you did the study and why you did it the way you did it. Yeah, so uh, thanks for the invitation to speak here. Um, so this is an area that we're really interested in, have been for a number of years. Um, uh, this is a very difficult group of patients to manage and it's not infrequent at all. Essentially, it's half of heart failure. The frustration is that in terms of the evidence base for appropriate treatment, really, we lack one. Um, and one of the problems here is that this is an intensely heterogeneous group. Um, so it ranges from people who truly have um, diastolic problems, either due to relaxation issues in the ventricle or compliance issues or some combination, to people who have shortness of breath, seem to have heart failure, but actually probably have something else. You know, overweight, deconditioning, chronic pulmonary disease, lots of other potential reasons. And so really the cornerstone of this, of this study was that we really went out of our way to try to characterize these people as having truly diastolic or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And the way we did that is um, we exercised them. So we took people whose filling pressure was not elevated at rest, but where filling pressure increased with stress. And we studied that non-invasively using echocardiography, using EO free prime. And to enter the study, they needed to have that finding. And, and because of that, I think we have a, a subgroup of this population, but a very highly characterized group where we're pretty sure about the physiology. We were fascinated by um, the, the possibility of changing the symptom status of these patients based on controlling their heart rate. And I think that in these people with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, that there's kind of two phases. Before filling pressure goes up at rest, um, there's a phase where there's uh, normal resting filling pressure and the filling pressure uh, goes up with stress. And those people, I think, are very sensitive to heart rate control. And so our idea was to use Evabradine, which is a, an IF blocker, um, that is a, a negative chronotrope, but unlike beta blockade, is not a negative inotrope and doesn't have, um, apparently, at least as far as we know, uh, negative leucotropic effects. And um, so we randomized these individuals to uh, short-term treatment with Evabradine, this IF blocker. And uh, we found that their diastolic characteristics improved, but in particular, their functional capacity improved. Yeah, this has been extremely important. So and it, it's been a very frustrating area because there's some studies that have shown beneficial effects on the echo features of diastolic dysfunction, but haven't shown an improvement of functional capacity. There was a, a study with uh, aldosterone blockade published uh, within the last year. Um, so we were intensely gratified to see this response. A change of functional capacity is estimated METs and actually an improvement of VO2 as well. And there's a difference between statistical significance and clinical significance. What you no. found here is clinical significance. Well, I hope so. I mean, the thing is that the you know, there is um, a, an improvement of more than 10% of, uh, of VO2. Um, and, you know, if your functional capacity is down to five METs, then, you know, 10% of VO2 probably is pretty important. Now, look, it's a short-term study. There's a phase three study that's in process at the moment, multi-center study, and I think that will, you know, I hope that that will give us some definitive information. Um, but it's, it's certainly encouraging, and, and I think we were very interested from a mechanistic standpoint about the role of, of heart rate control in people with filling problems. Well, and I think, too, that just the simple news of being able to tease out the patients who may actually be, yeah. of, who find this beneficial, I think is tremendously important. Yeah, I think it's been a very frustrating area uh, to study. It's kind of like trying to nail jelly, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of the big multi-center studies that have been reported so far, you know, you have to suspect that a lot of those people may have been short of breath, but they didn't actually have heart failure. And, and uh, the disadvantage of our particular study is that we are studying a subgroup, but on the other hand, we would say, 
this is truly a group where we think there's a hemodynamic cause for their shortness of breath with activity. Well, make sure you go to Jack and read the entire paper that uh, Marwick and Company have put together. It is fascinating. And from the European Society of Cardiology meeting, I'm Rick McGuire.